Hey, welcome back guys, it's Bob again. Listen, if you're the owner of a one pipe steam heating system and are wondering if you can individually zone off each room, well, the answer is yes. By using a valve like this made by a company called Danfoss, you'd be able to control the heat in each room. That's amazing on a one pipe steam heating system, but there are some rules. Stay tuned, I'll be right back after the intro. All right, guys, just to be clear, in this video, we're gonna be talking about this particular Danforce setup. Now, Danforce makes a great variety of valves for different applications, but this particular setup I use on freestanding cast iron radiators that are open to free airflow. And what I mean by that is there are no drapes over the radiator, there are no radiator covers over the radiator. And by using this particular Danforce model, you'll be able to dial in a preset temperature for that particular radiator without affecting the rest of the system. So you can essentially zone off rooms through use of this particular unit. So we're gonna jump down over here to this freestanding cast iron radiator. I'll explain to you how to take the air valve off, relocate the air valve on top of this unit, how to install the controller, and for all the other particular models that Danforce makes, I'm gonna leave links in the video description below. They make models that can be used on convector radiators, recessed radiators, radiators inside of cabinets. They make valves for hot water systems. This particular video is about a one pipe steam system. So if you have a one pipe steam heating system that operates at or below two PSI, this is gonna be the valve to use. So let's get to it. All right, what you're looking at here is a small little cast iron radiator, typical cast iron radiator you may find in your home. Now, it could be bigger, it could be smaller, but as long as it's a freestanding cast iron radiator, this is where this particular Danforce is gonna work, and you have a one pipe steam heating system that's operating at or below two PSI. And the first thing you want to do is, if this is being done in the winter time and the heating system is running, I recommend you shut the thermostat or lower the thermostat below room temperature or shut the switch at the boiler to shut the boiler off, get the steam to stop coming up. What I do not recommend is going down at the bottom, at the opposite end of the radiator where the hand shutoff valve is and using that hand shutoff valve to shut it off while you're doing this installation. It's not gonna work. Uh, when you play around with those hand shutoff valves, more often than not, you're gonna end up trapping water in the radiator, so I recommend to you is to shut the thermostat or lower the thermostat or shut the switch on the side of the boiler to get the heating system to shut. When everything's cooled down, then you can proceed with the installation, and basically, what you're gonna do is First, you're gonna remove the existing valve. It could be a Gordon valve. It could be a Hoffman valve. Doesn't really make a difference what manufacturer the valve is, but you're gonna to wanna to remove this. All right, so first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna remove the air valve. This is after you have the heating system shut down, everything's nice and cool. You're gonna remove this. You may need a pair of channel locks. You may be able to get this off by hand. You can back this off, very simple. Next step is we're going to install the main unit. Again, you can put Teflon, you can put pipe joint compound, whatever floats your boat. Could be one or the other, could be both. If, if you have a very loose, uh, loosely threaded tapping in the radiator, I would recommend using both. If it's pretty, pretty tight and you got a pretty tight fit, you can get away with just pipe joint compound, your choice. So that's gonna go in the radiator and you'll use an open end wrench that you can put around this hex here or a channel lock with no teeth on it and you snug that up and you wanna get that to where everything's vertical. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna exchange the angle valve that was on the radiator and you're gonna get a straight air valve. Now the straight air valve could be Manufacturer of your choice, I recommend either Gordon or Hoffman air valves. Those are the only two manufacturers I use. 
Now, as to whether you face it this way or you face it this way, it really makes no difference as long as the air can get out of it. The final step is going to be installing the controller. And you have this little green uh, kind of notch here, which kind of is your guide uh, on how to mount this vertically. And this has got a collar on it. This is kind of like a twist. This is a twist collar here. This actually, you hear it? That'll snap into place when you have it on there correctly. So you can just push the, and there it just did. It just snapped on. So now it's locked. And that's basically how you install this thing. It's very simple. Um, and in the right situation, in the right heating system, uh, these work fine. Now, I will tell you, the radiator must be uh, open to, to free-flowing air meaning we can't have drapes, we can't have drapes covering the radiator. Uh, we, we can't have the radiator inside of a, a steel enclosure. This will not work this way. If you're going to have this behind a drape or under a steel enclosure radiator cover, they make this particular unit with a remote sensor. So the remote sensor would have to be run outside the drapes or outside the cabinet mounted on the wall so it can sense the air temperature. And you can dial in the temperatures. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera and show you the dial and I will give you the approximate settings uh, in relation to the numbers on here. We have numbers one through five and I will just reposition the camera and tell you uh, what the corresponding temperatures are, the approximate temperatures are when you dial this puppy in. All right now, so essentially the valve is in the off position. And when we, when we dial it in, we're going to dial it, you're going to go to the left, and as you can see, you have an arrow here. So I am going to line up the number one with the arrow, and according to Dan Force, that number one is going to maintain approximately 57 degrees. This is something you might want to leave it on if you're going on vacation, you just want a little warmth in the house, you don't want the room to get completely cold. Next setting would be number two, and according to Dan Force's manual, uh, number two will set that temperature at approximately 63 degrees. We're going to move ahead to number three, 68 degrees. We're going to go to number four. Number four is going to maintain approximately 73 degrees. And number five is going to get you up in the, the 79 degree and above area. Now, these are approximate, approximate temperatures. They're, gonna, they're not going to be right on the money, you know, 100%. Uh, what you can do is you can dial this in, and then you can get a room thermometer and leave it in the room and see how this fares out in terms of how close they are with their uh, temperature readings in terms of the settings. And basically, that guys, that's it. That's pretty much all you have to do. Again, this is for one pipe steam heating system. This is not going to work if you're operating the steam boiler at or above 2 PSI. Trust me, I learned the hard way. I had gotten numerous callbacks. And when I went back and started to figure out and went into Dan Fawcett's uh, website to, to see how these things work exactly, if the steam heating system is at or above 2 PSI, these things are not going to work correctly. Now, I'm going to leave all the links to all the different models down in the description below this video. But essentially, this particular valve that you're looking at, the way I showed you, will work on a single pipe steam heating system. You want to make sure this radiator is pitched slightly back toward the uh, operating valve that's on the floor because you want the water that's in the radiator to get back to the steam system after it goes through its, its uh, sequence. So if you guys have a steam heating system and you're looking for a way to possibly control that one particular radiator or a series of radiators, I know people that have gone out and gotten these and, and, and they, they've put them in multiple rooms and essentially zoned off the whole house. And from what I hear, they have saved money on fuel because they don't have to maintain these rooms at such high temperatures. This is a good economical way to control a single room if you're too hot. And uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, so let me know what you guys think uh, down in the comments below. Again, they make a whole slew 
of different thermostatic valves for different applications. Some for steam, one pipe steam, two pipe steam, hot water, hydronic, forced hot water systems. There's a whole bunch of them. So you make sure you have to get the right valve for the right application. That's all I'm going to say, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, another solution to a problem a lot of people have. So guys, there you go. Listen, I know I repeated myself a lot. That's just my nature. But I just want to reiterate to you that you have to match the right valve for the right application, period. That's all I can tell you. And I found out the hard way when I first started using the Danforth valves, you know, I was having a, a multitude of problems uh, and not because of the valves, it was because of me and I didn't read the instructions. So I highly recommend if you're going to try this, make sure it's the right application. I'll leave all that information for you down below the video. Guys, I want to thank you for stopping by as always. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. But more importantly, hit that like button. YouTube is not going to show these videos to anybody unless you hit that like button. I want to thank you for stopping by as usual. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. As always, stay well and happy plumbing.